morning everybody and welcome to another day of today I work on and today I'm working on the boat heading out to the boat the seller has agreed to fix all the issues not all the issues but the issues that I cared about to get the boat uh, in decent shape the biggest issue that we have is called this dampness in the stringer so that means the stringer could have moisture in it and a stringer is basically the foundation of the boat and if you have a bad foundation right on a house what happens the house fails same thing with a boat if you have bad stringers what happens the boat fails and the stringer is the first thing that gets installed on a boat and the last thing to be it's impossible to fix a stringer once the stringer goes once the stringers go bad on a boat the boat is good for parts and we're not going to spend a boatload of money on a boat that has bad stringers because then you're holding the bag and I don't want to hold this bag because it's a big bag <laughs> so I basically I press the seller listen you want you want me to buy the boat you got to get the core tested on this boat so he finally agreed to it after a lot of back and forth and I'm headed there now to meet with the surveyor that's gonna do the core testing and the owner of the boat and I want to see with my own eyes what it looks like because I work with wood all the time I'm gonna know if the wood looks wet and the wood looks bad and it's gonna look rotted so I want to be there for this this is the biggest thing with all the little things I could take care of I can't take care of reinstalling stringers on a boat you just can't it's impossible you have to rip everything out in the boat so that's my plan for today just left the boat I met with the surveyor that my seller hired and we went over the boat the surveyor was like oh it's no big deal whatever but I, I don't care a business is business when it comes to buying a big purchase like this and you you really want to you know cross all your t's and dot your i's or like i said you're left holding the bag and you don't want to hold this bag so we we did drill in one of the stringers in the front of the boat and it came back wood was fine it was a little uh it was a little moist but it's solid so it came out red it wasn't rotted or anything uh it was it was a red pine it was like a, it smelled really good too and you can know by smelling wood if it's bad or rotted because if a wood is rotted it has a nasty smell if it smells like mm, nice pine or whatever the boat is built then it's good now the thing about stringers in older boats they can get a little wet around there's these little weep holes they're like this big because to run what water runs through into the bilge and sometimes they're not sealed correctly or they're not sealed really well and over time if your bilge is a little wet and those holes are open and not sealed correctly water will seep into the wood that doesn't mean that the boat will be bad it just means that there's a little bit of dampness around the stringer and that's exactly what happened with this boat since it's an older boat it's a 2003 but the biggest issue that i had is now solved he's having a mechanic out today to fix something else that he should have fixed that now he's going to try to get fixed today and then that's it we're you know we have to just call the finance company send them some emails and then we should be ready to buy the boat I am super excited about this and hopefully in the next week or two we'll be taking it home. Let me get home and I will start working on the work on garage. So I'll see you in a bit. Good morning everybody and welcome to another day of today I work on. And today I'm going to work on putting in all the outlet covers and switch plate covers in the work on garage. I'm going to go back to the marina and talk to the marina people about everything that has to do with having the boat at their marina it's at the end of the year so it is it's just not like i'm pulling up and keeping a boat on the water 
It's basically pulling up, keeping the boat in the water for a week, and then hauling it out to winterize it. So I gotta go about, I'm gonna ask him how long it keep the boat in the water. Lastly, what I need to do is I need to go to Home Depot and pick up all the trim for the work on garage, which includes the door, the window, the chase, the base molding, and then my ceiling trim I wanna put on to protect the walls. That's it for, that'll be it. That's a lot to do for today. So let me stop talking and let me start working on all of this. I'm gonna show you how I install my outlets efficiently and quickly. You need two tools. You need a screw gun and you need a flathead screwdriver. Or if you don't have a screw gun, just use a flathead multi, like an 11 in one, eight in one screwdriver. First step, I wiggle my outlet back and forth and then I push in as hard as I can into the outlet so my wires are nice and compacted together. Cause I don't want, the reason why I do that is I don't want these metal brackets that hold the outlet in to stress. So I push in as hard as I can, wiggle, make sure that the outlet is happy in the box. Cause that's where, that's where it's gonna live for the rest of its life. For a good 30, 40, 50, 60 years. After that, I just twist them and I always push the bottom screw into the hole so it's lined up. Then I take my screw gun and I line up, since the bottom screw is lined up, the top one just goes in naturally. And then I hit it with the screw gun and that's it. All done, it takes me two seconds. I see some people, especially people I hire, they struggle with that. So that's a, that's a pro tip. Now, the outlet cover I use, it's a midway nylon unbreakable outlet cover. You could buy a 10 pack for four or five bucks. They're way better than the standard size outlets because those are, those are not flexible. They're rigid and then if you screw an outlet, in too, an outlet cover in too tightly, they crack. So, and then this usually has a nice little, it keeps the screw come, from coming out. So I just push that in all the way and then I just line up the screw with the outlet and I push in like so. And then I just screw in, I just screw it in. That's it, all done. So that's how I do outlets and outlet covers. So let me, that's one done. I have to get the rest of them done. There's almost 20 in here. So let me start working on that. I finished most of the outlets and the outlet covers. I have one or two I need to fix. So I'll go grab them when I go to Home Depot. But if you notice behind me, one of my Sunco LED uh, four foot strip lights have failed on me, which is concerning. I usually have a great track record with Sunco and I always use them in all my clients' homes. I've used them in my I've been using them for the past four or five years. I've only had one recessed can light fail on me. And now this is my second failure. I don't know why it failed, but I'm going to have to message Sunco and see if they can send me a new one since it's only been on the ceiling for maybe six weeks and not on all the time. So it was kind of dim. I don't know if you saw them in the video, but it was a little dim and I'm like, Maybe it was a different power rating, but it wasn't. It was because it was failing. So the outlet covers are done. I'm gonna go head to the marina and see what they have to say. So let me get going on that. I'm gonna take the van to uh, the marina. And I love it. It's a lot of, it's just it's just a work, work truck. So, it's really good for 16 foot length boards because I can fit them on the inside. So let me uh, let me go to the marina, sort all that out, and then head over to Home Depot. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, we are now officially boat slip owners. Well, leasees, you, you lease the slip. I can't believe it. It's been 14, 15, 13, 14 years since I've owned a boat. This boat's way bigger than the boat I used to own. The old boat was a 24 foot bay liner, single screw, which means single engine, little 5.0 liter, very easy to maneuver, deal with. I had a lot of fun on that boat. I actually lived on it for a little while. This boat is a yacht. It's actually a cruiser's yacht. It's a 2003 3772 cruiser's yacht. It's about 40 feet in length, 13 foot wide beam. It's about 18,000 pounds dry weight. And it's gonna be a ton of fun. There's a ton of room on it for the kids. And we're just gonna have a great time on it next year and this is the right boat for us so on that note boat slip is done now i'm gonna be heading off to home depot to pick up some trim to work on the work on garage so let me get to work on that I'm back from picking up all the material at Home Depot, back from the marina. Now I'm going to start cutting up all this trim. I got, I just picked whatever Home Depot had. I don't, I think I still need more, but this is good for probably three, four hours of work. So let me stop talking and let me start working on all this trim. I got a little bit more accomplished today than I thought I was gonna get accomplished. I thought I was just gonna be able to pick up the trim, drop it off and call it a day. But I trimmed out the window and the door, which looks really good. So that means I did more than I thought, which is great. Now, I initially was gonna plan to put base molding on and put the trim piece around where I'm gonna do the access panel area, but I just realized I need to build my shelving units first. Um, these one, two, three, four walls. These walls here, I'm probably gonna do a bunch of little shelving on this, on this wall over here. And this is gonna be my work area. I'm gonna do a desk with a workbench over here. So what I have to do now is I need more material. I need to get a bunch of two by fours and expensive two by fours because material is through the roof right now. I hope it went down since I checked on prices last month. But material, there's between COVID and supply and demand issues on both sides, it's super, super expensive. On that note, I'm pretty much done for today. I need more material. I need a lot of wood to build all these shelves. So I'm gonna wrap it up for today's video and thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.